today's show, we talk to Damo and Ivers, Tracy Rooney, actor Eva Morrissey. And we're joined by local singer and performer, Miss Eva Whelan. I'm Alan. And I'm Ellen, and you're listening to... This is our West Side Story. On West Side Story, we hope to shine a spotlight on Luke and Silco talent. So each episode, we'll have a new performer in the studio to chat all things entertainment and to play you some of their wonderful work. So this week we managed to catch up with local singer and performer Miss Aoife Whelan and decided to chat with her about why she loves to perform so much. So uh, when did you start singing? Um, well, I can't remember when I never didn't sing, so yeah. Growing up, who, who inspired you? Like, what, what artists were you drawn to? Um, I've always liked Rihanna and I like how like, she's those different styles and she's always kind of changing and I used to always sing her songs. Everywhere, my mum would go mad because I just sing everything, house all the time. That's one of your YouTube videos, isn't it? Yeah, like yeah. I actually have a few of her songs on YouTube. I tend to cover her a lot because I like her. Yeah. I like her songs. But what's good about Aoife is she puts her, you put your own spin on stuff. It's not like Rihanna Fogg copied it. It's yeah, Aoife I like it. singing a Rihanna song. Kind of change some of the notes and add in kind of little different bits. So it's not just like a carbon coffee, like an exact same thing, you know. Why did you decide to kind of put yourself out there and put yourself on YouTube? I don't know, obviously I was on a bit of a singing buzz. I came home and I had my little fun screen on my iPod and I decided under, on my counter, under like the little switch on lights underneath the presses, so I'm like in the front camera, if you watch it, it's quite hilarious actually, and my nose is like off the camera and I was like, I'm going to sing Rihanna. <laughs> it's, just, it's tragic, but yeah. Not really sure how to feel about me. But obviously people like quarter of a million views. Yeah, on one of them, it was Stay, I think. Like, okay, I think it's totally like, I just like despise that one, but I can't take it down obviously because it's the one with all the views. But, um, and it's just like, I woke up the next morning and it was on like a hundred and then it, like that kept happening. It was going up by like a thousand a day then, like out of nowhere. And, I, and it was coming during the night, so I was like, maybe someone like, one of my family shared it in like America or something or somewhere like it's a different time zone yeah because it was I don't know I was like maybe it's up on some website or something because literally it was going up GMC like, has me yeah I was like what is this and it was like going up like by a thousand and I and I wake up every morning like mom look at my YouTube <laughs> she's like you freak That's crazy but yeah it was really weird and then I don't like it still goes up like by like a hundred like fifty like every day oh now tell me now tell me now tell me now you know have you ever tried to write your own songs? Um, well, there was one instant when um, <laughs> I sat home one night and I was like, I'm going to write a song, I'm going to be the next Beyonce. I got my notebook out and I was sitting there and I was feeling obviously very motiva motivational. And um, I started writing and I was like, okay, I, I think I've got this. And I was like, if God's DJ and life is a dance floor, like, and I was writing this out and I was like, these are some pretty genius lyrics, Aoife. Like, where are, you, where are you going with this? And then the next day, like, I had this song written and I was, like, really good. I think I added in a rap that was actually my own. It was quite inspirational, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> and then um, I showed my friend the next day and I was really proud and excited. And I was like, if Gaz DJ life's a dance floor. And she's like, Aoife, that's a song. <laughs> and I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thought that I had wrote Pink's song. And Pink had wrote before me and it was so tragic and... Heartbreaking. It, it really was. Yeah. I thought that was my lead to fame. Take it in, you know. Obviously not because it's already <laughs> a song. But <laughs> I really thought I really thought I wrote that song. I'm not about to rap. Do you think you'd ever try rapping? Um, no, that was quite a quick... Um, <laughs> We tried it and then it never did really work. I think, but no, it was it was tragic. Like. So do you hope to pursue singing then after uh, you finish school? I would like to keep it up. I don't know about as like a like a career, but I would definitely like to have it on the side. And do you know what kind of course you want to do? Or? Yeah, I'd like to do medicine in UCD. I was looking at you there, or Trinity maybe. Yeah, med medicine in. is such a, it's so far away from like the I know. Yeah. Like how, how did you find that you were interested in medicine? I don't know, because I, I was in college for the year, in the college of dance, like, and, um, and we did singing and I had my heart set on like not going back to school, going into like the performing arts and everything. And my mum was like, that's just not happening, like you need to go back to school, get your leave insert and then you can go and do what you want. When we started, like, started actually learning about like anatomy and all the biology, so I actually really enjoyed it. Um, 
actually okay at it. So I was like, maybe I'll just cut people open for a living, you know? <laughs> yeah, but that, it, that Emily Sandy did the same thing, you know that? Really? She was like in, two years into her medical medical degree. And oh, actually, I think I did hear that song. Yeah, and she got discovered and then she was like, okay. So maybe like if I'm that could happen cutting like Simon Cowell open or something. I'll just... Simon, can I have a record deal? <laughs> you were in, involved in uh, a production in The Helix um, in October 2014. Yeah, so um, I, yeah, I played... Um, Regina, who is pretty much Regina from Mean Girls, and she's a bit of a snotty, mean, selfish character. Which actually channeled quite well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, living in a house with a younger sister. <laughs> Wasn't oh, too hard it. to um, <laughs> cope with that role. Oh, yeah, that was really fun. And there was lots of like, singing and dancing in it and acting, so. I got to do all three. You were involved in the Monday workshop. Oh yes. In um, in January or February. Of yeah, we um, we went to do a songwriting workshop with Monday, and we learned some valuable life tips. You were there as well, Alan. I know. Yeah, it was yeah. very good. Let's get that out there. <laughs> I know Monday. <laughs> Fangirl moment. Yeah, so um, he played us a few songs and um, gave us a few of his kind of tips and what he does when he's writing songs and very motivational for that day. And then I was like, I'm going to go write some songs and then the next day it just kind of somehow faded. Yeah. <laughs> Where can our listeners find you? At Eva underscore Whelan on Instagram at Goldilocks321 and on YouTube, I think it's Aoife Dance XX. So Aoife, thank you very much for joining yeah, us. Thanks, so, thanks so much no for problem. joining us. Aoife. Thanks for having me. Come back to us when you're famous or when you're I will do. an award-winning doctor or something. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I was a liar, I gave him to the fire. I know I should have fought it. At least I'm being honest. Feel like a failure, because I know that I failed you. Should have been more careful. Because you don't want to lie. You know what I know what I know she gives you everything, but boy, I couldn't give No one I know when I know that you got everything, but I got nothing here without you. So one last time, I need to be the one that takes you home. One more time, I pull this up so that I'll let you go. Cause I don't care if you got hurt in your heart. I really care if you wake up in my arms. Make it worth it. Can't you forgive me? At least just temporarily. I should have been more careful. Cause you don't wanna lie. And I know when I know when I know she gives you everything. But boy, I couldn't give it to you. And I know when I know when I know that you got everything. But I got nothing here without you. So one last time, I need to be.
of One Last Time by Ariana Grande. Lovely to have Aoife in the studio, especially our first guest on the show, and hopefully we'll have many more people like her throughout the course of the series. You're listening to... So here on West Side Story, we are all about the people as it is a local radio station and we wanted to find what you had to say. So we assembled a special team called the Vox Pops to go to the streets of Lucan and gather your views. I got a new life, you would hardly recognize me, I'm so glad. How could a We're huge fans of Pitch Perfect and when we found out about the sequel, we were just so excited. So we've decided to ask the people of Lucan if they could see a sequel to any movie, what would it be? If I could make a sequel to any film, it would be a sequel to Cinderella because I really want to know what happens afterwards. That's difficult. Yeah. <laughs> you better wipe that off. <laughs> I think I would make um, I would make a sequel of Four Weddings and a Funeral because I'd like to see how that worked out. Would love to do Dirty Dancing. I would be amazing. <laughs> in a sequel or would yes. be in it? You would. Yes. <laughs> Mamma Mia. Save and Private Ryan. Fast and Furious. Uh, the heart of Dirty Dancing, Sprawlum Dirty Dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sprawlum Patrick Swayze. Oh, oh. Tushy, Mara Vanish, Sonny Bill and Toddy and if we should. So that's all for today from the Vox Pops. Back to you at the studio. <laughs> yeah, that was really interesting. So, Alan, if you could see a sequel to any movie, what would you want to see? It's Mrs. Doubtfire, but I know the original is so good. You know, I that's what I mean. Sometimes, like all my favorite films, if they make them a sequel, like sometimes the sequel just isn't as good. Like you don't want to ruin the film. I said Mrs. Doubtfire, so if you were asked, put to the button, okay? What put to the put to the button? Yeah, put to the button. It's in, it's in a new place. What <laughs> what um show what what uh, show or film would you bring back as a sequel? And you'd write it yourself, so you know it'd be funny. Clueless, one hundred percent clueless. It's like my favorite film ever, but I don't think I don't think I could do it justice though if I was trying it myself. I just love it so much. Like, I'd watch it all day long. I've never seen that film, so <laughs> I'm actually clueless about clueless. <laughs> I'm Alan. And I'm Ellen, and you're listening to. This is our West Side Story. Okay, and next up we have Leah, Josh, and Mia, who are going to talk to local actress Emer Marcy. And over to you, Leah. Our next guest is Emer Morrissey. Emer is an actor and producer. Her most famous roles are Tracy from RTE's Demo and Diver and Emily Mahan in Fair City. She was nominated for Best Actress at the Dublin International Short Film and Music Festival, and she is also a voiceover artist. Oh, would you look at this? Oh, I have a great plan. What was it? You going on the Henry Vile show. He sorts out everyone's problems. Do you know my cousin Natalie? No, not skinny Natalie, no, the fat one. Yeah, the human JCB, Natalie. <laughs> yeah, whore. Well, so where does your interest for drama come from? Um, I don't really know, but I do know that when I was a kid, I, from really, really young, like from five or six, I used to do impressions of people. I was always mimicking people. Like, my mum, um, this is terrible, but my mum, uh, my mum has arthritis, so she walked with a limp when I was growing up. And I used to do impressions of her limping down the road and uh, coming down the stairs. And uh, I also used to do impressions of my family. And uh, I'd be watching st- like uh, vocal impressions, like where the way they talked or, or sang and stuff. And um, so this became a regular thing. And then I started, obviously, as I grew up, I started watching television. And um, I used to do impressions of Mary Robinson. Bizarrely, when I was younger, I used to do um, impressions of Margaret Thatcher. And I don't, don't even know how that came about because I wouldn't have even known that she was. Coffee cat, coffee cat, coffee cat. So um, my family used to ask me to do, oh, do your impression of whatever. So I used to do that. And then um, when we were, when I was really young then as well, my cousins, I've cousins who are the same age as me, and we used to do perform shows every Christmas on Stevens's Day in our aunt's house. <laughs> And we'd sing and dance. And I'm not really a very good dancer at all. Um, but uh, so we used to do all that kind of stuff. So it was a mix of, I don't know, growing up and just being mad, I think, made me want to do, want to be an actor. Who inspired you to become an actress, producer, teacher? I don't know. 
to be fair. I, like, I mean, I, I was always interested in theatre and every Christmas we used to go to the gate pantomime, myself and my dad, and my only child. Everything about it is appealing. And we used to get the same seats in the dress circle. And Maureen Potter would have been, you know, still doing them, um, doing the pantomimes at that stage. And she was really funny. And I used to love going to the pantomimes. And I never actually thought of it as a career because it always just seemed like so much fun that oh, that wouldn't be your job. Um, and it wasn't until I did a production. I got involved in amateur theatre in my early teens and right through to my late teens. And I did a production of um, Doghouse by Gina Moxley, who's an Irish writer. And we I did it in Driuk at the time, which is a theatre in Blanchardstown. And she came opening night to see it. She was a writer and she came to see the show. Uh, it was directed by Jim Coulson. And I remember her telling me that she thought I was really good. And had I thought about becoming an actress or an actor? And I said, well, only you have to be really good to do that. And she said, well, wh why don't you? You know, wh why do you not think, you know, you are? And I said, well, you know, I, d I don't know. And she told me to audition for Trinity. She, she started telling me of the courses that there were. And uh, I, the only things I suppose I'd known about was um, in school we used to do musicals in, when I was in secondary school. And I knew a lot of people had auditioned for the likes of Trinity and didn't get in. So I always thought I'd never, ever, ever get there. Um, and, but, but Gina Moxley encouraged me to go and I did. And I auditioned and I'd say I did a really bad audition and um, because I was just one of those things like okay I'm going to do this and I didn't get in and then I waited another couple of years and I auditioned for the Gaiety School of Acting and I got into the Gaiety so I, I don't know exactly what inspired me I suppose I think going to Pantos at a young age that was my first exposure to to theatre and uh, and then she definitely gave me the kick or the confidence push that I thought I needed um to become a teacher I don't know. Um, I actually had, I had so many good teachers in secondary school and primary school, but in secondary school, so many, are, the school that I went to, Hartstown, was, was new at the time, and there was a lot of young teachers there, and they were always so involved and fun, and they did musicals with us, so I, I think I always thought, yeah, I think I'd like to teach. I never thought I could teach drama, which was just brilliant, because it's my two loves, Um. And I suppose they, collectively, those teachers inspired me to want to teach. I want to be a producer. And a producer. Um, that kind of came out of necessity. I started working in Driuk and we had a general manager who used to work for theatre companies in London. And she was there and she, she said, you know, have you ever thought about, she thought I was good at organising things. And she asked me, had I ever thought about producing and directing? And I said, no. And she suggested that I should think about it. So I did. And then at the age of 20, 19, 20, I produced my first musical, produced and directed my first musical. And that was in Drake, and it was called Slice of Saturday Night. Gonna take me a slice of Saturday night. any time I producing is fun but I get so involved in it that I end up getting stuck behind my computer and I forget about everything else so uh, I much prefer to be in on stage or in front of a camera than producing but I guess again that was just out of necessity so I was pushed in that direction and I enjoyed it what training did you ever take in and for about how long uh well like, I suppose being involved in uh, in amateur societies like I was involved in a musical society a pantomime group and a drama society and so I would have gained experience of going on stage and, and working with directors and that kind of thing and performing but then I when I left college I trained I, I thought I was going to be a primary school or a secondary school teacher and I trained in Maynooth College and I left and I became a primary school teacher randomly for a while because I'd substituted for a while and I was going to go back and study but I still hadn't quite given up on the dream of being an actor or that performance and so I auditioned for the Gaiety School of Acting and I got a part-time course there and I did that for a year and then I auditioned for their full-time course again and I got that so all in all I, the performance training in the Gaiety the full-time actor training is two years it was two years full-time um, hard work the part-time course was one night a week so I had done that and I knew that definitely performance was what I wanted to do so I suppose I had a year of that and then I had two years full-time 
after training and then out into the big bad scary world and here I am continuing you're always I think I think personally you are always learning you're always training everybody you work with is different so you learn new things all the time and I find that by teaching younger people I learn from watching the way that they work and different things that they might say uh, makes me challenge what I do as a performer so I'm officially I train for two years but unofficially I'm continuously to train because that's the only way and you can catch the second part of that very interesting interview with actress Emer Marcy in episode two of West Side Story have an interview with choreographer Debbie Kiernan to look forward to and here's a sneak peek. What are you looking for from the dancers tomorrow? Well basically we're looking for the uh, triple threat which is dancing, singing and acting so we need everybody to do all three for this musical and um, it's very much a singer's dancer show. I'm dancing and singing in the rain. I'm Ellen, and you're listening to West Side Story. And now over to our special correspondent, the Vox Pops. We're here today at Grand Canal Dock for the Dublin Dance Festival's Linear Flow, which incorporates many different dance styles. And that's all performed by a range of youth dance groups from all over Dublin. And after their first performance, we got a chance to chat to some of those dancers to ask them about today's performance. And it was really great, it was fun, and I liked everyone watching it. We learned it in separate groups and came all together for the finale, but it was really nice because everybody was mixed in, you weren't standing with your own team, you were mixed with other people. We all did our best and it was really great fun. It was so much fun and it was really fun to meet other um, groups, other dance groups and see their performance and see how they dance and work together and um, we got to show off our piece as well which is really fun. Very interesting to see all the other groups and network with other groups and other styles and all appreciate each other's talents. Do you like the costume that you're wearing today? Uh, Yeah, I absolutely love it. Well, it's kind of like a Victorian old Queen of England because our dance was like Victorian. It's really, really nice. It's all sparkly. There's like a big collar on it. It's so nice. I love it. We actually got Luke Brown from over from England to teach us it and he's such an amazing choreographer. It was a great day. It was so energetic. All the groups were amazing and I just like felt really proud of all the groups and especially our one. Luke's choreography, it's just amazing. And like like him himself, to have him teach us was a pleasure and such an amazing experience. It was amazing and you really got to show what you can do. It's really fun to perform in front of people and it just makes me really happy to show people what I can do with all my friends. You're listening to West Side Story. Now it's Lean On by Major Laser, Feet Mo, and DJ Snake.
this episode of West Side Story, we'd like to thank all of our contributors. Keep a special eye out for all our Vox Pops on the streets of Lucan, who are Ashling, Rebecca, Esther, Marina, Sinead, Laura, Eva, and Emma Kate. And we'd also like to thank our three guests, Aoife Whelan, Eva Marcy, and Debbie Kiernan. I'm Alan. I'm Ellen. And, and you've, you've been, been listening, listening to... Oh, 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 oh.